So in this video, I really want to talk about financial planning and how that changed over the last 60 years. Often when I speak to clients and I do their financial wellness plan for them, something that often comes up is no parent has talked to them about their financial planning. And that, that's really interesting, you know, if you kind of think that uh, very little discussion happened between the parents and the kids. And I've done some research on that and I came up with some really interesting uh, stats or concepts why that happened. If we just look at the last 60 years, there have been some seismic changes that happened um, in the workplace, in family life and the way that we think about finances. And in this video, I just want to unpack some of those, uh, some of those things. So let's look at the history um, since 1960. So if we look at the industrial uh, revolutions that happened um, over the last couple of centuries, we had the first industrial revo revolution in the 1800s until 1840. The second one in the, over the turn of the century in the 1900s. The third one uh, happened in 1960, uh, which was the information technology revolution. And then uh, the fourth one, which we're part of now, is uh, from 1995 till now, 2020. So what was life like in 1960? We had the Vietnam War, we had also the Cuban Missile Crisis, and uh, John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King were both assassinated. So there were real some world turmoil uh, at the time. If we shift the focus to business, then there was a strong loyalty between employers and employees, and, and it's interesting how they play out in the financial space. Also on, on life expectancy, what is really interesting, if you go and look at the stats, the male life expectancy in 1960 was 69 years. So only four years uh, of life after retirement of, of 65. And so no wonder companies um, were happy to structure defined benefit funds for, for the employees. And so effectively a defined benefit fund, especially for the millennials in the audience, uh, a defined benefit fund is when you worked for a company for 40 years, uh, you pitched up you went to work for 40 years and effectively you get two thirds of your, of your salary as, as pension, which is brilliant. And so um, a lot of those kind of things changed over the last 60 years. So how has financial planning changed since 1960? Well, if we just look at um, technology, we're part of the fourth industrial re revolution. In 2005, the first YouTube video was uploaded. Now. 300 hours of video is uploaded every minute and we have a billion videos watched on mobile devices per day and especially now in COVID that's probably more than a billion. As we make this video we're still part of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and one never knows how this thing is going to play out whether it's going to enhance the fourth uh, revolution or whether we think there's a fifth one uh, on the horizon. And so I think over the next couple of years, we'll definitely see the impact of this. But one thing that is certain, we do become more individualistic. That's not even to say social distancing, but just the way that we operate. Uh, the, the loyalty between employer and employees are broken. Uh, we hear stories where people are laid off immediately. Um, there's a lot more people that are individualistic. The growth of the gig economy has, has grown significantly. And so that all kind of play out in this uh, real interesting space that we're in. Also the life expectancy. Now in 2020, the life expectancy is now 84 years for an adult uh, male. So that means from 65 till life expectancy age is now 19 years. That effectively means that if I want to have the same living standard than the guy or my parents, let's say in the 1960s, I need to have four to five times as much money. Uh, compared to what they uh, were needed to save. So no wonder we're in, in, in such trouble. The last one is defined benefits disappeared, uh, defined benefit plans disappeared. And, and really we've, we've seen a phase out of that and a lot more companies offering defined contribution plans or not even that allowing the employees to look after them completely uh, themselves. As an individual, um, you have to save money for yourself for retirement and making enough money to fund your, your retirement after, um, after 65. So what is the summary of this? If we look at 1960, we sit with a 
loyalty between employees and employers, a life expectancy of only uh, four years. We had the, the opportunity to have defined uh, benefit funds that were looking after the employees. So that just means that all that risk sat with, uh, sat with the company. As opposed to now, we sit with this gig economy. Uh, we also have a life expectancy, as I've said, with 19 years. And all the plans that I need to put in place for myself for retirement is on me. So I need to save as opposed to the company. And what does it mean? All the risk is back on the employee. So that's why financial planning becomes such an important uh, discussion point uh, for individuals. And each of us are responsible uh, for our retirement planning. And uh, it really falls back on us. Okay, so what does it mean for us now in 2020? First of all, we need to rethink retirement. We, we kind of used to the concept of retiring at 65. Um, when we speak to clients, it's always, you know, when do you want to have the ability to have that financial freedom to be able to retire? And the answer is always 65, which is, you know, I, I think we've, we've been kind of raised with that uh, answer in our heads. And we think that that is really something that the baby boomers invented. And, and mostly that's where it's going to stay. You know, we, it's unlikely that the Gen Xs and the, and the millennials will be able to save enough money uh, uh, for retirement. So we need to think differently about retirement. We need to be able to live life while we're working, uh, as opposed to just work full out till 65 and then think you're going to enjoy life afterwards. So there's a change of mindset there. The second thing is a change of mindset in terms of employment. Uh, when I went to university, uh, it was always studying towards a profession you know, being an actuary or being a doctor or a lawyer. And my kids now, it's very different. It's more about studying towards a skill set. And so there, I think one needs to kind of think about it, even for people in their 50s and 40s, is to think what skills do I have and how do I add value to my clients with a certain skill set? And what are those skill sets that I can take into retirement? So if I have that skill set, I can maybe earn some income after retirement as consultants or start a business or whatever. So just to kind of supplement uh, the income after retirement and just kind of think a little bit out of the box and, and differently there. The last one is accountability, which is really interesting. If you kind of think that in 1960, when you worked for a company, um, they were effectively your accountability partner. If you didn't pitch up for work, they'll phone you. So, you know, where are you? Uh, you were accountable to your line manager to pitch up for work because if you just pitch up for work and you have your work, you're going to get a pension. A pension. Now it's obviously very different. Uh, the gig economy is individualistic. I can decide whether I want to go to work or not. I can decide how hard I want to work. What psychology tells us is that I've got a 42% better chance of reaching my goals if I write my goals down compared to just think about it in my head. 42%. The, the next one is if I'm able to commit to be accountable to someone verbally about my goals that I've written down, it goes up by 95%. So the chances for me to reach my financial goals will go up by 95% if I write them down and if I speak and I'm being accountable to someone as opposed to just think about it. So I would encourage people um, to think differently about retirement, to think differently about employment, and then lastly, making sure that you have one or two people that you can check in and that you're accountable towards in terms of, of the family uh, finances. Well, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video and we would love to connect with you if you have any questions.